I think we just about have a completed painting. Tell you what I want to do. You know, I always talk about nature so much, and I'm such a fanatic. I want to introduce you to my little friend. Look right here. Can you see him? This is my little friend, Peep. He's a little robin, and he lives with me. I'm taking care of him until he gets a little bit better and he can fly away. And from Peep and myself, we'd like to wish you happy painting. God bless. We'll see you next time. This is a lot of fun. I think you'll enjoy this painting. It'll teach you a lot. And I tell you what, you know, I've talked in, in several of the shows about my little friend, the little bird. I showed him earlier. I was, had so many people ask me if I'd show him again. So we have a minute or so left here. So let me, let me bring him over here and show you how he's doing. Look at here. This is, this is the little mocking, or the little uh, robin. Can you see him there? Look at here. Look at that. Isn't he cute? See if you look. See? You know, I always talk about the birds have to have a place to sit. This little bird was orphaned, and he lives with me now. And I feed him every day and take care of him. And pretty soon, he's going to be a big bird. He's going to learn to fly. And we're going to turn him loose and send him back to nature. So if you see little creatures around your house, help take care of them because they're, they're God's little creatures. And they're fantastic. Get to know them. Make friends with them. This one was loaned to me by the bird lady here in Muncie where I film. And uh, he's a loner bird. So well, I call him Peep because he peeps all the time. He's always hungry. Look at that. He even eat my finger. The old clock on the wall tells me we have to go. So from all of us here and my little friend, I'd like to wish you happy painting. God bless, and we'll see you next time. You know, in the last series, I showed a little bird, a little, a little robin that I was raising that, that had lived with me since he was just a baby. And we've had so many people write and tell us that they've, they've watched this and they want to know what happened to him. Let me show you the robin. This little bird was orphaned and he lives with me now. And I feed him every day and take care of him. And pretty soon he's going to be a big bird. He's going to learn to fly. And we're going to turn him loose and send him back to nature. Now just recently, myself and Diane Schaefer, she's the bird lady here in Muncie. We released that robin when he was full grown. I had raised him from a little tiny baby until he was a big bird. And Diane and I let him go close to her house. And that's really, it, there he went. That really makes it all worthwhile. My gosh, I must have, I must have spent half my life for a while there running around and chasing earthworms to, to feed this little robin. But I just wanted you to see that he was all right. Uh, he grew up and I was so proud to let him go. This year I raised seven little birds and they all went. We had everything from robins to starlings. Even I even raised some starlings, and I know they may not be the best bird in the world, but I like them. I like all little birds. There we go. And the lady you saw there on the screen that was with me, so I say she's the bird lady here in Muncie, and we're trying to put together a show to, that will show what she does and how she takes care of all these birds, and maybe you'll get to see that in the future. Hi, welcome back. I'm spending a few minutes here with my friend. This is Mr. J. And he's a little blue jay, and, and he stays with me right now. And that's one of the cutest little rascals watching here. I thought you might enjoy seeing him. But he's just a little baby, little baby bird. And I thought you might enjoy meeting him. Tell you what, I'm going to set him down, and we'll go ahead and get started. While I'm doing that, let's have him run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along today. And I'm just going to set him right over here. There you go. Okay. Hi. Hi, I'm glad you could join me today. I have my little friend Jay here with me again today. We've got so many cards and letters in. So ever since I showed him on the program, I just thought I'd show him one more time. He is the cutest little devil, and he lives with me, and we have a good time together. Hi. He's a little blue Jay, and he's one of the neatest little friends, and he's, he's very excited being here in the studio. This is something brand new to him. And he said, look here. You want something to eat, huh? There. Yeah. Oh, easy, easy. He'll swallow your whole finger if you're not careful. Tell you what, let's have him run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me, and, and I'll put him over here. 
and we'll get started. Here you go. You sit over here. There. All right. I hope you enjoy seeing these little rascals as much as I like showing them to you. These things are, are really my friends, and I enjoy the birds, and we have a lot of we have a lot of fun together. Hi, welcome back. I'm glad you could join me today. Today I have a special friend with me here that I want to I want to show him to you. This is my little friend Hoot, and Hoot's a little baby owl, and he is a character. And as you can see, Hoot and I have the same hairdresser. Boy, that son of a gun's got a hair that looks just like mine. And he's just, oh, he's about two weeks old now. And this is his first time in front of a camera, so he's a little nervous. But I borrowed him from the bird lady so I could show you. That's Diane Schaefer. She lives here in Muncie, and she takes care of all these little characters when they get hurt. This one was orphaned. As I say, he's about two weeks old. Hey, isn't he something, though? Beautiful little bird. Yeah, yeah. You going to talk a little bit? Okay, I think we have to go to work now. I'll tell you what, let's have him run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me today. I'll set him down, I'll be right back with you. So we'll just set him right over here. There we go. He's still squawking. Grab the old palette. Hi, welcome back. I'm glad you could join me today. Today I'm standing here with some of my little friends that I'm gonna show you here. This is four little robins. And they're just, they're just little babies, only a few days old. Boy, they, oh, look at that. They are hungry, too. Of course, little robins are always hungry. And they live with me, and they're just cute little devils. Hey, they got one here that he's gonna, he's not gonna yell. Okay, I just thought I'd share those with you today. These are just little babies. They're probably, oh, maybe a week old now. And we'll raise those and turn them loose here in just a few months. So I tell you what, let's do. Let's have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. And while they're doing that, I'll set these little rascals down and get my palette, and we'll do a fantastic little painting together. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. I brought my little friend Hoot on one more time so you could see him. We've got so many cards, and people have called asking about him. I just wanted to show him again. He's a little baby owl, and he's one of the cutest little devils. See if we can get him to put his wings out here. Look at there, isn't he beautiful? He's about three weeks old now, two and a half weeks or so, and very, very cute. Yeah, you gonna talk a little bit? He really is a beauty. I am so fascinated with these little creatures, and I hope you are too, because I like to show them to you. Look right up there, can you see? There we go, and he's just nothing but down. As I mentioned earlier, him and I have the same hairdresser. We both got the fuzz top up here. Okay, tell you what, it's time for us to go to work. So I'm going to set him down. I'll have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me today, and we'll get started. So I'll set him right over here in his little basket. Now this son of a gun has some talons on him that's just unreal. Even at his age, they must be a half an inch long, and he will get you. Not on purpose, but that's just what happens. Welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. And today, I'd like to introduce you to some little friends that I have with me. This is four little chimney sweeps, and they're just sort of <laughs> hanging right here on my shirt. These are the cutest little devils, and they live in chimneys. Ooh, they've got one that's hungry here. And a lot of people hear them in their chimney, but not too often do you get a chance to see them. And believe it or not, in this mess of birds here, there are four of them. There's one hidden under there, and they're little babies. Just a couple of weeks old. I thought you might enjoy seeing these. I borrowed these from Diana Schaefer, the bird lady here in Muncie, to show you. So I tell you what, let's have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me today. And while they're doing that, I'll see if I can get these rascals off my shirt and we'll get started here. This is like pulling leeches off. So we'll just take them right off. They have unbelievable little claws. Come on. There we go. Here's one. Yeah. Let's say you don't have to worry about them falling. All right. There. Okay. Today I have my standard old 18 by 24 inch canvas up here. This is a triple primed canvas, so it's all ready to go. And I've covered it with a nice thin even coat of the liquid white, so it's wet and slick, and we can get started. <laughs> they think it's time to eat. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me, because today's a special day. 
Today I have a couple of guests that I want to introduce you to. These are two little baby robins, and they're some of the cutest little rascals. Hey, oh, what you gonna do, huh? But you don't supposed to eat my finger? No. We've named these two little robins after two of our camera people here. So I'll introduce you. This is Kathy, because he talks all the time. And this is Richard, and we named him Richard because his hair is coming out. <laughs> so these are special little friends, and they're just as cute as they can be. They're just a couple of weeks old, and they are hungry. They're always hungry. There. So, yeah, you are so cute. So I tell you what, let's start out today and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. And while they're doing that, I'm going to set these little guys down. And I'll be right with you here. Okay. We'll set him right there. There. Tell you what, you know, it's interesting. In the last series, in the last series, we showed a little baby owl. I hope you've seen that. He was about so big. He was just a little ball of fur. In fact, I think I remarked that he had the same hairstylist as I do because he was nothing but a ball of fur. We have got so many cards and letters asking about that little rascal. I thought today, well, we took a trip out to the bird lady's house. Let me show you how old Hoot's doing. And I think you'll enjoy seeing what's going on with him because he's no longer a little baby. Look at this rascal. He's now a full grown owl and he is absolutely beautiful. I sat and talked with Hoot for a little while and a little nervous getting in the cage here. That son of a gun's got some big toes. Look at the claws there. And that was his way of saying, that's enough, no more. And while we were there, we talked with Diana Schaefer, the bird lady, and she had allowed us to look at some of the little creatures that she had, and you know me, I immediately go for the birds, and I had to play with the little birds. This is some little sparrows. They're just very young, only a week or two, not even probably a week or two old, just probably a few days old, and they were fantastic. I had to, I had to spend a couple of minutes with them, and of course give them a little something to eat. Here's Diana. <laughs> Diana loves all animals. She's one of the few people I know that would take a baby groundhog that had been orphaned and take care of that little rascal. And she plays with it like a little kitten. It's the darndest thing I think I've ever seen. And he's very, very cute, and very tame, and just, just a joy to play with. This beautiful hawk here came from Alaska, and he lost a wing, I hate to say. This is a wild turkey that Diana's raising and she has a male and a female wild turkey. Her husband, John, is quite a turkey hunter. Now this, everything's not great in life. This was a little robin that was born with no eyes. He's blind, so I had to see him. And here's my little friend again. These little sparrows are some of the cutest little things. They're nothing but mouth, and they eat continually. It'll certainly give you something to do if you're taking care of one of those. Yeah, oh, who till he's, He's grown. By the time you see this show, he will have been turned loose and he'll be long gone. He's probably, by the time you see this, he'll probably have a little condo in Miami and house payments, a BMW in the driveway. He'll be like the rest of us, all trapped with responsibilities. He may even have children of his own. You know, if you've been with me before in some of the past series, you know I love to show little creatures in all the shows. Well, recently, one of my neighbors brought me over a little baby squirrel that had fell out of a tree, and the kitty cat had got and they rescued it. And this is the way it looked when I got it. <laughs> looks like a little drowned rat, doesn't it? Now is what he looks like today. This has got to be one of the cutest little things that you've ever seen. And Annette and I have raised this little rascal, and he's almost grown now. We call it Bobette. <laughs> that way we both have our name in it but he is the most precious little devil. And as I say, he lives with me, and he sort of has free run of the house. He just runs around and tears up everything. But he's getting a little old for that. We're gonna have to, gonna have to turn him loose pretty quick. Just about grown. You know, it's interesting. In, in one of the earlier shows, I showed my little, my little pet squirrel, and we've got so many cards and letters. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that little rascal up here again and let you see him. Cause he was the cutest little thing. This is how it looked when we first got him. This, now to give you an idea, he's sitting on Annette's hand. Now there's what he looks like today. 
This is the cutest little devil. We call her Bobette. And she is a mess. <laughs> but she lives with me, has a great big cage we call Squirrel Hilton. Oh, got me on the nose there. Son of a gun. Squirrels or something else. But she's about to the age where she's not going to be friendly anymore. About ready to go back to the wild. So we'll turn her loose here very soon. But she is something else. I thought you might enjoy just seeing that little rascal. All I'm doing here is just tapping in some basic little tree shapes. I have a tremendous love for these little creatures and devote a, a lot of my free time to helping them and taking care of them and whatever I can do to make their life a little easier. And if we're going to have animals around, we all have to be concerned about them. So help us out. Shoot, if you got a little creature that lives in your yard or around where you're at, help them out a little if you can. You'll find that they're very enjoyable and they bring hours and hours of pleasure just watching them play. You know, we've got so many letters in, in some of the earlier shows. I showed my little squirrel that lives with me and we've got literally hundreds of letters and calls about the little rascal. So I thought I'd show him one more time since this is the last show and let's just let you see this little rascal and see if you like him half as much as we do. This is what he looked like when Annette and I first got him. He looked like a little drowned rat. And this is what he looks like today. He is one of the most precious little creatures to me. And he lives in the house with me, sort of runs around and tears everything up. But he's right on the verge of being, being at the age where I have to turn him loose. Because he's, he's ready to go free now. Go live with his own kind. He just puts up with old bushy-haired guys so long, and then he's ready to go back. But he's very special to me. Very special. And I hope you, hope you enjoy seeing that little devil. All I've been doing here is just blending this so it's very soft. Hi, welcome back. I'm glad you could join me today. And today I have one of my little friends here that's having lunch while we're doing this, so I thought I'd share her with you. This is a little baby fox squirrel, and she's just having a little lunch with me. Ooh, what's there? Too much, huh? There, isn't she something? She's only a few weeks old and just as cute as a button. I thought I'd show her to you today. There. Alrighty, enough of that. This is just one of my many friends. I'm going to set her down and we'll get started here. Okay, if I can get her off my shirt. There. They have about 9,000 claws and they can all seem to grab you at once. Hi, welcome back. You know, in the last show, I, I had one of my little friends here, a little, little fox squirrel. And so many people have called and wrote in because I mentioned we had four of them and they wanted to see the rest of them. I've asked a friend to come today to help me because it's a son we're going to try to hang on to four. This is Dana Jester, and he's one of our instructors that travels all over the country and teaches people the joy of painting. And as you can see, he has an armful. <laughs> what do you got going on there, Dana? Oh, I don't know. Your kids are going wild here, Bob. Here, look at here. You want a little bite to drink? they're hungry. Yeah? Yeah, it's time for them to have a little nibble. Look at this. Aren't they the cutest little devils, though? I know they're excited, that's for sure. Well, this is a big deal for them to be in front of the cameras, and they're a little nervous, but they're still hungry. They still like to eat. Here you go. There. Isn't that something? Look at these little devils. They are absolutely precious, and I, I thank Dana very much for coming and helping me today. Here, turn loose, guy. No, okay. These guys aren't Let me give this one here. I got one in my arm here. Let's give this one a little bite. You want a little drink? There. Isn't that something? There we go. They are so cute. They are just absolutely precious. And as I say, these are little fox squirrels, and they're very young. And There. OK. Tell you what, let me set those down, and, and let's get a painting started for today. All right. We'll just set him right over here. OK. You know. I travel all over the country and I meet a lot of exciting people. And uh, as you know, I'm absolutely crazy about little creatures and stuff. And recently I had the opportunity to meet a fantastic lady by the name of Carmen Shaw and she lives in Orlando. And we filmed a little bit of footage with her and I'd like to, I'd like to share some of that with you. And, and this is Carmen feeding one of her little pets. This is a little possum. Isn't this the cutest little devil? and he's just very young. And Carmen takes care of animals that have been orphaned or 
or they've been injured and she patches them up and she devotes her whole life to taking care of these little creatures. And these kind of people are absolutely wonderful and they're, they're necessary if we're going to preserve some of these creatures. I want you to watch how she feeds this little possum. He's, he's a hungry little dude. <laughs> there. And see, I just get to go and enjoy him. She has to do the taking care of it, though. Look at there. Think that rascal's not hungry? <laughs> he's something else. But I got to spend several hours with Carmen, and, and she shared with me quite a few animals that she has over there. She has everything from cranes to hawks and, and owls and just a multitude of animals that have been injured or hurt. And she does all of this on her own. And I think it's fantastic. And, and amongst all of her little creatures, she has deer and foxes and raccoons and etc. And she has a little fox named Major, which is one of the cutest little creatures God's ever made. And Major has been hurt, and somebody even cut his tail off. But she allowed me to, to go in the cage with him and show a little bit of that here in just a second. All we're doing here is just dropping in some highlights here. There. Okay. See, now we're just pushing upward with this brush, like so. Okay. Now, the little fox, as I say, his name was Major, and he's... He's absolutely precious, and he's, he thinks he's a puppy. That son of a gun is just about as tame as he can be. I, I got up all my nerve and got in the cage with him there. And as you can see, we made friends very quickly, and we had a very good time together. While you're watching that, I'm just going to put in a little water line right here. And this little devil was fascinated with my hair. Of course, I guess it... He thought it was steel wool. Maybe it was time to clean the dishes or something. I don't know. But, but he was fascinated with my hair. He tried to eat my hair off. There. The only thing I'm doing here while you're watching that is just, just putting in a few little water lines here and there. Just with a little touch of the liquid white. But isn't, isn't this little fox just beautiful? Just fell in love with him. As I say, his name is Major. Okay. <laughs> I spent about an hour in the cage with this rascal, and, and we just had a heck of a time together. Hope you enjoy seeing these little animals. They are so precious, and, and I love to, to show them to you and share them with you, because these, these little critters are my friends, and I spend a lot of time with them. And I enjoy meeting people like Carmen and, and the bird lady that would bring you here in Muncie and everything. These are special people to me. I tell you what, while I'm doing this, because this is going to take just a second, I want to I want to show you one of my little characters that's living with me now. I have I have three little baby squirrels that I'm raising, and they're the cutest little devils. And we took a little little video of them, and I want to share that with you while I'm doing this. And I won't do anything I don't tell you about while that's that's coming on there. Now these are tiny little baby ones. They're just beginning to get a little fur. And I've had them now since just after their eyes opened. And these little rascals are hungry continually. So I thought I'd show you how we feed them. And to do that, we take a, I just use a little syringe with a little, little nipple on the end of it. And it's just like going to the doctor and getting you shot when it's feeding time here. We fill her up. And normally though, when you see a syringe coming at you, you're, sort of scares you a little bit. But in this case, when, the, when my, little, my little friends here see a syringe coming at them, they get excited. This just makes their whole day. And it's hard to get them to eat, as you can see. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think they'll eat about every 15 minutes if you'd feed them. But I say, I have three of those little rascals now. And they live with me and, and my mother and I, and Nancy, we all take care of these little devils, and, and they're going to they're gonna soon be big enough to turn loose and let them go. There. I'm just putting in a few little clouds down here while you're watching the little squirrels. And you know, 
It's interesting. I, I have so many little creatures that I like to share with you. I thought today I'd show you just a little bit while I'm, because I'm going to do another tree on the other side, just like this one. And while I'm doing that, let me, let me show you my little pal here. It's a little, little girl squirrel that lives with me. And she is the cutest little devil that you've ever seen. She's my friend. And she is absolutely precious. There, in just a few more weeks, she's going to be ready to, to go back to the wild and I'm going to turn her use, loose right in my backyard. And maybe she'll build a nest and have some little kids back here and maybe she'll bring them to see me. And little squirrels, boy, they like little kids. They get into everything, absolutely everything. Here, here she wanted to look at, look at the headset and see what kind of music we were listening to. Now this is true stereo. I mean, this is getting into your music. I thought my son Steve really got into his music, but compared to that squirrel, <clears throat> no, he just sits around and listens. She literally gets into it. She is very cute, though. There. Tell you what, while we're doing this, because it's going to be just like we did on the other side, let me share a couple of more of my little creatures with you. I mentioned earlier in one of the shows that I'd met a fantastic lady in Florida by the name of Carmen Shaw. And she's allowed me to come out and film some of her animals. And she has some of the most beautiful little Florida deer here. Aren't those beautiful little characters? I don't know how anybody could shoot Bambi. <laughs> I like these little characters. I want to take them all home with me. And I'd almost move them in the house with me. But these are the most gentle little creatures. And both of these have been injured to the point that they'll never be able to be released again. I'm just putting in these same old trees while you're watching the deer there. It's interesting, these deer, for some reason, took a liking to my hair and pulled it off nearly. This is a little bitty raccoon, just a tiny little baby one that she had just got in. He was a mess, but he's a cute little devil. By the time you see this, he'll probably be grown up and going off and, and have his own family. Any cute though. I like these little creatures and I really hope you enjoy seeing them too. See, that's all there is to it. I'm gonna make several of these. And while I'm making these, let me, sh let me share another one of my little creatures with you. As I say, I, I am such a nut for these little creatures. This is my crow here and he lives with me. We call him Midnight. Isn't he a mean looking son of a gun? And he's one of the nicest little creatures that you've ever seen. That's Midnight. He lives in my backyard right now. And sort of a sad story with him. Some, somebody tried to shoot his wing off. And it's, he's, he didn't do too good for a while. We, we didn't know if old Midnight was gonna make it for a long time. But a lot of nice people have helped him. And I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna be okay now, but he'll, he'll never be able to fly again. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to watch that when you, when you see something as beautiful as he is and he'll never be able to fly again. You know, in some of the past shows in this series especially, I've, I've enjoyed showing you some of my little creatures. I want to show you one more <laughs> today. We got just a second. I'm just going to be doing this while you're watching. But this is one of my little squirrels. And they bring so much pleasure into my life. My mother and I enjoy these. She plays with them too. She, she probably wouldn't admit that. But she has about as much fun with them as I do. And they love to get in your pocket and hide. And that's where, if you'd let them, they'd spend most of their time. It's just hiding right there in your pocket. So we call them pocket squirrels. <laughs> Aren't those cute little devils though? These are just babies that are just beginning to get fur from from their baby fuzz. There. Yeah, then. See, he had to hide his head there a little bit. Probably fell asleep. But sometimes they stay in my little pocket there all day. And I just walk around the house, forget they're in there, and they go to sleep and take life easy. And they they really are a lot of fun. There we go. Hope you enjoy seeing them. I'll tell you what, you know, in the last series I showed a a couple little baby squirrels. They were so small. And they look like little drowned rats. And we've got so many calls about them. I want to show you what they look like today. <laughs> These little devils are about grown and they're almost ready to be released. 
And this is one of my little friends here. He's sitting on my, on my settee eating a little cherry tomato. And they are the most gorgeous little creatures, and I have so much fun with them. I hope you enjoy seeing those as much as, as much as I enjoy showing them to you. But they really are precious. There. I have one little squirrel that the veterinarian has told me that it probably has epilepsy. So it has to live in the house with me, and we give it medication in the whole nine yards, just like it was a little puppy or something. And it sort of has free run of the house. But he just runs around and plays. Actually, it's a she. There. Maybe in one of the other shows in this series, I'll, I'll, I'll bring some footage in and show you what she looks like, too, because she's a cute little devil. There. This would be a good place for my little squirrel to live. You know, speaking of my little squirrel, we showed him in a series or two back, and he was just a little tiny baby. I want you to look at him now. This rascal, when I showed him to you the first time, he looked like a little drowned rat. But look how big he's gotten. And he is the most fun. And he lives in, he lives in my house. Believe it or not, the little devil sort of runs around loose about half the time. And Annette and I just, we just sort of let him run around when she's there with me writing the books and etc. We just let this little rascal run around and she even let she even lets it run on her computer sometime. Of course we've had some little accidents on her computer too. We, we won't talk about those. There. But it's all fun. I hope you enjoy seeing those little critters. Take a little bright red and put in there too. Not much. Very strong. These little animals are a very important part of my life. They're just about my best friends. This would be a, I got I to show you one of my babies. I like to show you creatures all the time. And recently, I went out to see the bird lady in Orlando who lives close to me, Ann Young, who's a super, super lady. And she let me play with Danielle here. Daniel's a, he's a little fish crow, a little Florida fish crow. And he's one of the most precious little things you have ever seen. And Daniel and I spent Oh, I don't know. We probably spent several hours together because he's hungry continually. Little rascal. He could, he could eat you out of house and home in a minute. Look at the size of the mouth on that character. <laughs> but he is absolutely precious. There. And Ann has all kinds of birds over there. She takes care of songbirds that have been orphaned or injured. She lets... She releases a couple of thousand birds a year, if you can believe that. She raises these things and releases that many. Uh-oh, had a slip there. Yeah. There. The only thing I was doing while you was watching Daniel there was just putting in a few little limbs on this, this old tree here. That's all. There. Speaking of little characters, in this series, several times I've showed you my little squirrels. I want to I wanna show you another one. I'm just going to make a few clouds here while you're looking at these little rascals. But I think you really enjoy them. They're some of my special people. Here's one. He was on my set tee one day, and, and I had a, some magazines out. And he had to sneak up and look at the magazines. And there's a fox, if you can see it, on that Florida wildlife. <laughs> and it sort of shook him up. I think he recognized the picture of that fox and knew he was sort of a natural enemy. But he did his little war dance and, and got out of there. But when squirrels get excited, it's easy to tell because they'll, their little tails will just go crazy. I mean, they will do a dance. And that's so cute. There. Isn't he something else? And I have two males and two females. Shoot, who knows? Maybe pretty soon we'll have some little squirrels if they calm down enough. There we are. And we're still putting in some little clouds here while you're watching the little rascals. Hi, welcome back. Glad you could join us today. Today I have a special little friend here with us that I'd like to share with you before we get started. This is a little kestrel, and it's one of the most beautiful little birds that you've ever seen. And he's also known as a sparrow hawk. And he's with us today. I, I borrowed him from the bird lady here in Muncie. And I think he's one of the most gorgeous little birds. And his name is Falky. And he was raised by a young man here in Muncie. And look at that. Isn't he something? 
Hayes is one of the most gorgeous little characters. Hope you enjoy seeing him. Falky, I gotta go to work. So I'm gonna tell you what, we're gonna have all the colors ran across the screen that everybody needs to paint along with us today. And while they're doing that, I'm gonna show everybody what we've done on this canvas, okay? Good. Come right up here. Let me show you what I've got going. Today we've got our standard old pre-stretched canvas. So with that, we're about ready. Hope you like seeing that little, little kestrel. That's one of the prettiest little devils. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. And as you can see, today I have one of my little friends with me. This is a little baby cedar waxwing. And it's easy to tell because he's got bright yellow little tail feathers. But he's just a very small little baby. Isn't he the cutest little thing that you've ever seen? Hi, hi, hi. You can get an idea how small he is. Oh, he's going to eat my ring there. Okay, tell you what, let's start out now and run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us today. While they're doing that, I'll set my little friend down and we'll get started. Okay, guy, you go sit right over here and I'll be back with you in just a second. There you are. Good. Welcome back. I have my little friend Falky here again today. We've got so many cards and so many people have called in wanting to know about this little devil. Thought I'd show him again. This little rascal is just absolutely gorgeous. He's a kestrel. Look at him. Isn't that something? See if he'll eat a little something here. There you go. See, we give him a little bit of beef heart. And that's what he'll have for lunch today. You want a little more? Hmm? There. He is absolutely precious. Some places, as I mentioned earlier, they call him a sparrow hawk. But he's just gorgeous. Let's see if we can make his wings go up so you can see how he looks. He's a little baby. There. He's just learning to fly. All right. And you notice I have a big glove on here. He has some claws that are absolutely unreal. All right, I think guess we'll set him down here in just a second. Tell you what, while I'm setting him down, let's have him run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us today. And while they're doing that, why don't you come up here and let me show you what I've got done already. Hi, welcome back. I've got another little friend here today, and this is just a little baby Robin, and he's just the cutest little thing. And he's a little nervous about being here in the studio with all the lights, and he's probably three or four weeks old. But isn't he precious? Just a little baby one. I like these little Robins, because they have one of the nicest personalities of any birds going. Look at that. And probably in about another three or four weeks, he'll be ready to release and send back to the wild. So let's start out today and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, why don't you come on up here and let me show you what I've got done, and I'll set this little fella down. There you go, guy. You sit right there. <clears throat> These little trees would be a super place for my little squirrel. If you've painted with me before, you know I have all kind of little creature pets. I'm going to share with you today my latest little squirrel that's living with me. He is the most precious little thing. You have to force him to eat, see? <laughs> we call him... Peapod the pocket squirrel, because he would live in your pocket forever. And one of my neighbors, a young man named Dennis, lives down the street from me, found him and brought him to me. And he lives with me now. I think I have five squirrels right now and two crows. And this little squirrel will be ready to turn loose here in just a few more weeks. And, and he'll go back to nature and he'll have a good time. And these things usually, they usually stay around the house when I turn them loose. And, so I get to enjoy them sometimes for years and years and years. There. But isn't he cute? Little, as I say, we call him Peapod the Pocket Squirrel. This would be a nice place for my little squirrel to live. In the last show, we, we showed you a little squirrel that we called Peapod the Pocket Squirrel. <laughs> and we've had so many people write and call about him. I want to show him again. Maybe we can introduce him to you again in case you missed him last time. Now, we call him a pocket squirrel because he would absolutely, I think, live in my pocket continually. There he is. Isn't he the sweetest little thing? He's just a little baby gray squirrel. And he climbs down in my pocket at home and rides around there all day. And then sometimes he even falls asleep in the old pocket and he'll stay there for hours and hours if I allow him to. There. I'm just making some little evergreens while you watch it. See, now, when he climbs down the pocket, that's what he looks like when he's asleep. I want you to see what he looks like up close. Isn't he something? 
Of course, he's got huge foots for his size. <clears throat> he's been with me now for about a month, about a month, and he'll be ready to go in just a few more weeks, maybe a few more months. Sometimes I keep them a little longer than actually I have to to make sure they got the best possible start in life, and then we turn them loose and off they go. And pretty soon they have their own little squirrels and little condo in Miami and car payments and BMW, you know, all the regular problems that the rest of us have. And there, I'm just still making little evergreen trees using the corner of the old fan brush. And in your world, you put as many or as few as you want. It's up to you, totally and completely up to you. Let's put a little baby one right in between there. There, just a little guy. That's for my little squirrel. And then we need a couple of big strong ones for the big squirrels. I'm gonna bring this snow all the way up here. And while I'm doing that, I wanna share with you one of the most fantastic little creatures that you've ever seen. Cause this'll all be just the same. This is a little deer that Diana Schaefer there brought, brought here to the station for us to see. She's the bird lady here in Muncie. This deer was found right outside of Muncie in a, in a farmer's field and it had been orphaned. And Diana has raised this little deer and today it's been set free and he really is doing fantastic. But I had such a good time with this little fellow. I spent several hours just playing with him and, and I thank Diana for sh sharing that with us. He is absolutely gorgeous. We didn't, we didn't even name him, but it always looks like Bambi to me when I see a little deer. But isn't he something? That has to be one of the most gorgeous creatures God has ever made. <laughs> I'd like to take him home and just, just keep him as a pet. But that's not what he's meant to be. He's meant to be free. As I say, he's already been turned loose. This was shot about three months ago. There. But isn't he the most beautiful little thing? <laughs> I get to watching the deer. I have a monitor here. I get watching the deer and quit painting. This makes some beautiful little background trees. Be a nice place for my little squirrel to live. I tell you what, we've got so many requests about that little squirrel. This is all gonna be just the same. I'm gonna tap in some little trees. I'm gonna show you my little rascal again here. He is one of the cutest little devils that you've ever seen. And it's fun to watch him eat. That son of a gun, he can tear up an eyedropper in a heartbeat. And if you've seen this one before, this is the one that we named Peapod the Pocket Squirrel, because he wants to live in your pocket all the time. I think if you allowed him to, he would stay there 24 hours a day. But I've raised him ever since he was just a small baby. In only a few more months, he'll be ready to turn loose and out on his own, have his own family. This would be a fantastic place for my little squirrel to live. I gotta show you another, another picture of that little rascal. If you've been with us during this series, I've showed you two or three times our little squirrel that we call Peapod the Pocket Squirrel. And he's one of the most precious little creatures. And while I'm doing this, we'll just put him up here. Now after he eats, that little rascal will sleep anywhere. <laughs> he is the laziest little devil. Watch him though, he just climbs up sometime. Now, I have an old towel here and he just climbed up in it and sort of made himself at home and kicked back and Oh, tummy's full and it's a nice warm day and off to sleep we'll go. <laughs> but isn't he cute? And after he goes to sleep, you can you can literally just pick him up. Look at that. Looks like he's at the beach, doesn't he? Kick back there and getting a few rays. But that's how lazy that little rascal is after he gets his tummy filled. I think he's just one of the most precious little creatures I've ever had. I say his name is Peapod and he wants to live in your pocket. <laughs> he's probably, oh, he's probably five weeks old now, maybe. It'll be another couple of months before we can turn him loose and then off he'll go and he'll have his own family. There. And hopefully he'll stay around my backyard when I turn him loose and, and still visit with me. But if he doesn't, I know he's happy and he's doing what squirrels should do. So pretty as one of the nicest places. My little squirrel, if you've, if you've watched some of the other shows, this would be one of the places my little squirrel would love to live, right in here. 
And I want to show you a little piece of film that we made. And this is my little squirrel out on the big hunt. And he's out doing whatever squirrels do in the deep, deep woods. Look at this. Isn't he the cutest little devil? He's fighting his way through the forest there. Uh-oh. <laughs> There's the forest. For some reason, I, I don't really understand it. Those little squirrels seem to like a hare. I think it reminds them of their nest. But that's, if you haven't seen him before, that's the little squirrel we call Peapod, the pocket squirrel, because he likes to live in my pocket. He's a character. We've showed him several times in this series. I hope you enjoy him. I've just taken a two-inch brush and tapped the base of this a little bit to just to soften. I want that misty area. You know, in one of the earlier shows, while I'm doing this, because I'm just doing the same thing, one of the earlier shows, I showed a little deer that I had the opportunity to meet. And we've got so many calls about that little rascal. I want to show him to you again and see if you like this little devil. He is one of the most precious little creatures that you could ever imagine. And I had the opportunity to spend a, about a half a day with him. And Diana Schaefer, the, the bird lady here in Muncie, was taking care of him. But isn't he a gorgeous little character? <laughs> I tell you, you could fall in love with these and, you know, I just don't have the heart to shoot Bambi anymore. Once you hold one of these, you just, yeah, deer hunting days are over. Or at least for me it is. I get so attached to them, I just want to keep them as pets. Move them right in the house. I've got enough creatures in the house now. That's all I need is a deer running around the living room. There we are. I'm just putting in some little sky things here while you're watching that. Same, same procedure. I'm not doing anything different. And we had to, had to give him a little drink. And you notice how big that bottle was. It was I think it was a Coke bottle he was drinking out of. Sure hope you enjoy seeing him again. Right there, there's another little tree. I think I'll put a bunch of little trees in here. What the heck, all the way across, man. Be a good place for my little squirrel to play. He loves to run around in trees. In fact, let me, let me show you my little squirrel one more time. I'm so crazy about that little rascal. I'm just gonna be putting in a few trees here. This is what I call my, my peekaboo squirrel. But isn't that the cutest little thing? Watch what's in there. What is it? Peekaboo. <laughs> he likes to sleep in my hand. In fact, once you feed him, that little rascal will sleep just about anywhere you put him. But look at the size of his foot. It's no wonder they're so agile in trees and stuff. With that a foot that big, you can run up and down any old thing. There. Okay. But I like to just watch him sleep like that sometime. He's so pretty. We go. This would be a fantastic place for my little creatures to live. I have all kinds of little creatures. Shoot, I got squirrels and crows and just everything. But tell you what, I'm gonna put on a few more of these while they're doing that. Let me let me show you one of my little creatures. This is a I won't have them bring up a little raccoon here that that I played with. This came from one of our rehab ladies we're close to where I live, named Carmen Shaw. And I borrowed him. He's a he's a loner raccoon. But he's the cutest little devil. And he's so much fun to, to play with. <laughs> but they do grow up and they get a little nasty sometimes. One of them little rascals can. So if you're, if you're raising a raccoon, be careful when they grow up. They're pretty tough little characters. But when they're babies like this, God's never made a more delightful little thing. And they're just like feeding a little baby. Oh, they just lay there and, and when they're done, you pat them on the back and they burp. I get sort of carried away with these little characters. Shoot. My mother lives with me and, and her and I have all kinds of these little characters. Isn't that precious little devil? See the milk running out of his mouth? He's not very neat. There. Okay. This would be a fantastic tree for one of my little creatures to live in. I gotta show you one of my creatures. Here recently, my son Steve, who I'm sure you've seen on some of the other series, came to Florida to visit me. And I had the opportunity to introduce him to a couple of my little squirrels. And Steve had never had a squirrel set on him before. So it was, <laughs> he's a little nervous about having this little tree urchin run all over his body. But he sat and watched for a little while and pretty soon Steve was sure that he could handle it. 
But aren't these the cutest little devils? Now you saw these in earlier series, this little squirrel here, when he was just a tiny, tiny little baby. And now he's grown up and we've turned him loose and he moved far away. In fact, when I open my back door, I can look right up into his nest. There's a tree limb that comes right over my back door. And these two little brothers built a nest literally right over the back door so they can tell anytime anybody comes out and hopefully they'll have a nut with them when they come out to, to feed them. I'm just putting some leaves on this tree while you're watching Steve there. Well, that'd be a fantastic place for one of my little critters to live. In the last show, I showed you Steve being introduced to one of my little squirrels. Now, Steve had never played with a squirrel before. I'm going to show you him again while I'm doing this. I'm just going to be putting in some of this little dark hair, and we'll show you. This is in my backyard in Florida, and Steve finally got enough nerve up to let the little squirrel jump on him. There. But isn't he the cutest little devil? I mean the squirrel. <laughs> Steve's a little big to be cute. When this was made, Steve is, what's Steve, 24 now, he's 24. Little short guy, six foot five. He calls me shorty. Shoot, this would be a, just a super place, these trees for my little squirrels to live. I gotta show you my little squirrels again. You know, one of the earlier series, I showed you these little rascals when they were tiny little babies. They looked like drowned rats. And here just recently, we turned them loose and they moved far, far away from home. There's a big tree that hangs right over my back door and they built a nest right in the tree that hangs over the back door. So every time somebody walks out, there they are. But aren't those the cutest little devils? That's two little boy squirrels. <laughs> They're my friends. I really like these little rascals. It's a nice little tree here. It's be a fantastic place for my little squirrel to live. I've showed him several times. I'd like to show him one more time in this series because I'm so crazy about these little rascals. There, there he is in my backyard. You see, after I turned him loose, how dependent he still is. I think, it, I think he's got sort of used to, to the old man feeding him here. <laughs> they, they really didn't go far when I turned him loose. They certainly knew where they had it made. I'm gonna put a whole bunch of this in here. You know, while I'm doing this, I just sort of put together a couple little segments of film with some of my little creatures on it. I wanna sort of share them with you. This was my little squirrel when he was just a baby. Annette's holding him there. Isn't he just the cutest little thing? And then he gets a little older pretty soon and this is what they look like. There. Aren't they cute? This is Peapod. You remember Peapod the pocket squirrel? Now you know why we call him a pocket squirrel. He's just the cutest little thing. And by the time you get to see this, he'll be free. He'll be long gone. Look at that. That's one of them that I've raised and released. And you see how far he went, right out in my backyard. And he, he thinks foraging for food is running up the old man's leg. And that's, this is what it looks like to him when he runs up and finds a peanut. But he's so cute. That's what it looks like. But aren't they the most precious little things? So I say, I've raised them since they were just tiny little babies. But I got a letter a few days ago from someone who thought we were condoning making pets out of these creatures, and I really don't. All of these creatures we turn loose back to the wild. I work with several of the rehab ladies around the country. Here in Muncie, I work with Diana Schaefer, the bird lady. And in Orlando, I work with several fantastic people like Carmen Shaw and, and Ann Young. She's the bird lady in Orlando. And I just think these are super people that are doing a job that needs to be done. And there's somebody in your area that does this too, but chances are, and they need your help. If you have time, stop by and give them a hand and you'll find it so rewarding. Shoot, I, I go over to Ann Young's house whenever I have a few minutes. She just lives a little ways from me. And I sit around and feed the birds and she, cause she raises thousands of birds every year and releases them. You know, it's, Interesting, over the years and the, all the time we've been doing this period, I've had so many little creatures and stuff. I thought maybe today I'd just, when I'm putting these trees on, because I'm just going to put them on, I'd just show you a quick bunch of little photographs of some of my little creatures and let you take a look-see. Maybe you'll remember some of them. 
because they're very special to me. They play a very important role in my life. And I just absolutely love the little devils. That's Girly Girly Brown. <laughs> She's quite a character. And it's Danielle, this, the, the crow. He belonged to Ann Young, one of the bird ladies that lives very close to me. There, he's a character. He's all grown up and gone now. And there's Carmen Shaw with her deer. Hey, hey, Bob Storer, we went sail fishing together. Of course, we let him go too. And there's my little raccoon. Isn't he something? There's another picture of Squirrely Girly. She's something else. She's still with me, Squirrely Girly. She's almost ready to turn loose now. Almost ready. We do not keep any of these animals. We don't try to make pets out of them because they are wild creatures and God meant for them to, to be outside. The only thing that I want to do and the, all the people who help them is just to give them the best possible chance to survive. A lot of times they get orphaned or hurt and that's all we're trying to do. As I say this, I like these woodsy scenes because this is a fantastic place for all my little creatures to live. I got to show you one of my little creatures. Here recently, I, I, had the, I had the privilege of going out and seeing a fantastic lady named Carmen Shaw, and she had a little baby fox. And she told me if you look in the dictionary under cute, it would say baby fox. Isn't this the most precious thing you've ever seen? I'm just putting limbs on while you're watching that. Not doing anything that you won't see. But I love these little animals. And Carmen, there she is. She brought a little raccoon over to visit the little fox. This is just a baby raccoon. Of course, he's a little older than the fox. Whoops, hey. <laughs> I, I think maybe there's a little personality conflict there. But aren't those precious little things? I have to agree with Carmen. When, when they made the word cute, they had that little fox in mind. There is no doubt, because they are absolutely precious. I think that one's six or eight weeks old. Carmen's a super lady. Lives right outside of Orlando, Florida. And she's a rehab specialist. She takes care of all these little animals that are injured and orphaned. And she nurses them back to health or raises them up, whatever they need. And then she turns them loose, lets them go back, back to nature. You know, I got a little piece of film I want to show you today. It's so fantastic. You know, I love, I love animals and I work with animals all over the country. I'm just going to be doing this while we're looking. And animals have a special affection for children. And my young friends love animals. This is my friend Paul. And he lives right outside of Orlando. And, and his grandmother is Carmen Shaw, who's one of the animal rehab people. This young man, he is so cute. And this little baby raccoon he has here, isn't he precious? Paul and I sat and talked for quite a while. And, and he told me a lot about animals. This, this young fellow, since his grandmother has worked with animals for many years. He's grown up literally around these animals. He knows more about animals probably than I do. And he has a special thing. He's inherited his grandmother's, well, I don't know. I think, I think animals know when people really like them and they trust them. And this young fellow has that. But isn't he cute? Deserts are fantastic places. There's a lot of a lot of fantastic wildlife in there. For example, there's a lot of cougars and big cats. And recently, I had an opportunity to spend a little time with a big old kitty cat that I think is just absolutely gorgeous. This kitty belongs to Carmen Shaw, and the cat was given to her, where she actually found it. I'll tell you that story in a minute. And all of Carmen's friends have named this, this beautiful cat Carmen after her. Now this was a kitty that somebody had purchased as a pet and the little kitty turned into a great big cougar, grew up, and they decided they didn't want it anymore. So they put it in a little little kennel cage and they took it out and they left it in the woods to die. And when Carmen got this thing, it was just about dead. She worked with it for a long time and she saved it, and this is one of the most beautiful animals God's ever created. Isn't he gorgeous? I can't imagine anybody hurting something like it. But I'm sort of strange. I like all these critters anyway. All right. But I love that big old kitty. I like doing all these little trees and bushes. That really is 
some of the most fantastic things. Because I know there's all kind of little creatures that they've got. I gotta show you one more little feller. Shoot, we've showed you several animals in this series. I want to show you one more, one more little fella that I think you'll just love. This is a little baby raccoon, just a tiny little thing. But I think he's one of the neatest little characters. I'm just painting his tree while we're watching it. I think he's just absolutely darling. There. By the time you see this, though, he'll probably be, oh, he's probably going to be grown and long gone because it doesn't take too long for these little devils to grow up. They grow up quite rapidly. And then we turn them loose because God intended for them to be free. And I believe that's where they should be. All right. I'm just going to put in a lot of little land areas, you know. And recently, recently I had, I had the opportunity to meet a couple of very fantastic people. And they have a little kitty cat that I want you to see. These two fantastic people are raising a couple of little Florida panthers. That's Bennett and Chris there. Very good, very good friends. And they're raising these little panthers until they're adults. And then they want to use them they want to use them to teach children about how fantastic animals are. And they work with big cats. But aren't these little devils gorgeous? When we filmed this, one of them was six weeks old, the other one was seven weeks old. I don't know which one this one is. But they are so pretty. There we are. But these, these very well may be, if they're not for sure, the most endangered, most endangered mammal on the North American continent. These are the Florida panthers. When I was a little boy living in Florida, they weren't that rare. I would hear them. I, I actually never saw them very often, but you would hear them at night. And they make a sound that sounds, well, it sounds just like a lady, a lady screaming far off in the distance, and I would hear them. They're almost non-existent now. The few that remain, most of them are in captivity. It's probably the only chance they have of making it. But weren't they just gorgeous? There. I'm just tapping in all these little layers of grassy areas here. Thought you'd rather see the kitty cats than just watch all this. I'm an absolute animal freak. I love all these little creatures that God put here. There we are. And if it was up to me, I'd just raise them all, take them all home. But I guess you can't do that. I raise all kinds of little animals each year. And then we turn them loose. I don't keep them. We turn them loose and turn them back to nature where they belong. But sometimes they get injured or orphaned and they need a little help. And I work with some fantastic people that have taught me a little bit about animals and, and they allow me to, to work with them on some of these things. And I tell you what, I have a canvas here that I've already prepared and have it completely finished. So you can see it's just basically the same thing that, that we've done there. I'm going to put this canvas on my easel, and then we'll go ahead and paint the picture. In the meantime, the other day I had a fantastic experience with a gorgeous, gorgeous little owl that I want to share with you. And we'll put him up here, and we'll look at him while we're changing these canvases. This is a great horned owl. One of my good friends in Florida, Cindy, loaned me this owl to play with a little bit. And he's very young, probably hmm, five, six months old. But he is one of the most gorgeous birds that you've ever seen. And when they get big, oh, look out there. <laughs> He's just playing. But the rascal almost got my nose there. But aren't those the most beautiful things? Now, I like animals so much, I'm telling you, I could just about make a career out of taking care of these little rascals because they're so beautiful. Isn't that something? We'll put him on at the end of this show and let you see him again because I think these owls are some of the most gorgeous creatures that God has ever made. They're just, they just absolutely wonderful. Shoot, I'd like to have one for a pet, but you don't keep these kind of creatures as pets. These kind of creatures, God meant for them to be free. So we raise them up and we get them grown or we take care of them, whatever they need, and then we turn them loose and they go back to nature where they belong. So I don't suggest you keep wild animals as pets. I wanna, I wanna introduce you to a fantastic lady while I'm finishing up this little mountain. You know, I, I tell you, I work with a lot of the rehab people all over the country. This lovely lady's name is Cindy, and she's right outside of Orlando, Florida. And she allowed me to come out and, and film some of her animals. And this is a, a little sandhill crane. And they think when it was in the egg, its neck got twisted up. 
and it probably will never be able to be released. But gorgeous ladies like Cindy devote their whole life to just taking care of God's little creatures like this. She has all kind of creatures out there. If you saw the owl earlier, that belonged to her. That's a baby that she's getting ready to release. Probably by the time you see this, he'll be out and living on his own someplace, having a good time. But I'm, I have the greatest admiration for people who devote their whole lives to them. Now see, here's Cindy showing me the biggest squirrel I have ever seen in my life. This is called a Sherman fox squirrel. I think they're quite rare. There's not many of them left. I'm just tapping the bottom of the mountain here. There's not many of them left. And she has one that is so tame that he's just unbelievable. He is gorgeous. His name's Little Bit. I don't know, there's nothing little about him. He's, he's as big as a small kitty cat. There. All right. Look at the tail on this rascal. He is something else. As I say, his name is Little Bit. But isn't he something else? I'm going to put in several little clouds here. You know, one of the earlier shows, I showed the biggest squirrel that I had ever seen. I'm going to put him up and let you see him again while I'm just, I'm just going to be dropping in some of these little things. I won't, I won't do anything you don't see. But this rascal is something else. I have never seen a squirrel this big. This is called a Sherman fox squirrel. And he's as big, well, he's as big as a small kitty cat. So, and very docile, very quiet little squirrel. And this one is, is quite a pet. He belongs to my friend Cindy, one of the rehab ladies that lives around Orlando there. And she takes care of him. She's turned him loose several times, and he won't go away. He's sort of like one of my squirrels that I have. I keep turning him loose, too, and he comes back. But now this squirrel's big enough. He knocks on the door and comes on in. <laughs> there we go. But isn't he something? I like these animals. I really like to play with them. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. And today I have one of my little friends with me I thought I'd introduce you to if he's cooperative here. This is a little baby fox squirrel. Turn around there and let's see. Isn't he the most gorgeous little character? He's just a little baby. He's probably, oh, maybe, maybe four or five weeks old. Just a little fella. He was orphaned, and one of the one of the rehab ladies here in Muncie was taking care of him, Diana Schaefer, and I thought I'd share him with you. But he's one of the most fantastic little characters. I just love these little rascals. They're my friends. Right? How you doing? How you doing? You got a fat tummy. Yes, you do. Okay, I guess we have to go to work. You ready to go to work? Huh? Yeah. Okay, let me put him down, because I would play with animals through the whole show. <laughs> I'm so glad you could join me today. I've got a couple of my little friends here, a couple of little baby squirrels. Today I have a little gray squirrel right here. This is a little gray squirrel, and the other one's a fox squirrel. They're just little babies, well, three or four weeks old. Aren't they precious, though? I just adore these little critters. I just thought I'd share them with you before we get started here. Hi, guy. How you fellers doing today? They are something else. There. They are absolutely precious. As you notice, though, the fox squirrel is much larger than the little gray squirrel. And that's the same way they'll be when they grow up. Okay, I guess we have to go to work, guys. Hey, you ready to go to work? Okay. Tell you what, let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. While they're doing that, and I'll set these little fellows down. Come on, you ready to go? Isn't he precious? Yeah, you gotta go now. Time for me to go to work. Alrighty. Hi, welcome back. Glad you could join us today. Today I have one of my little friends here. You know, I've got several letters since I've, since I've shown these in the previous shows asking how in the world you go about feeding a little squirrel. Well, it's a very delicate operation. Diana has worked with me for a long time. Diana is the bird lady here in Muncie who loaned me this little rascal. And this is how hard it is to get a little squirrel to eat. That's all there is to it. Aren't they the most precious little characters you've ever seen? Yeah, poor guy. He hadn't had nothing to eat for years. You could feed them 10 times a day and they'll always be just about this hungry. Hey, you know I have to go to work. Yeah, I have to go to work, okay? All right, I'm gonna set him right over here and let him finish lunch. And while he's doing that, we'll just get started. 
So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. Today I have one of my little friends with me. This is a little baby cedar waxwing. He's just a, oh, probably 12, 14 days old. Maybe, little, maybe a little older than that, but not very old. And he's just as precious as he could be. I thought I'd bring him on today and share him with you. Hi, guy. How are you? Can you talk a little bit? Huh? Can you talk a little bit? Huh? Talk a little bit? What? What? Yeah, I know. Yeah. But he's something else. Tell you what, let's have him run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us today. And while they're doing that, I'll set him down. If you'll come right up to the canvas here, I'll show you, I'll show you what we've got going on. Well, he's decided to clean himself here a little bit. All right. Hey, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. You ready to do a fantastic little painting? Tell you what, before we start, I'd like to take just a second and introduce you to a couple of my little friends that I have here. These are little tiny Swifts. They're just the teeniest little babies. Can you see them there? Look at that. Aren't they the cutest little rascals? They're probably maybe about a week old. Just little tiny guys. I absolutely adore these little characters. They're so cute. Look at there. <laughs> Looks like Mutt and Jeff. They're just beginning to get their feathers in. And probably in a, only five or six weeks, we'll, we'll turn them loose. I'll tell you what, let's run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, I'm going to reach right over here and put them back in their little nest. And off we'll go. There, you guys go sleep and I'll go to work, okay? There. Hey, welcome back. I'm certainly glad you could join us today. I'm, I'm standing here talking to my little friend, Mr. J. He's a little blue jay, just a little baby, and I wanted to show him to you today. Today's a very special day. This is the last show of the 29th Joy of Painting series. So I thought Mr. J were to come out here and, and get to meet everybody. Turn around and say hello. Say hi. Hi. He's a little tiny blue jay, just a few weeks old. Yeah. Yes, he is. Isn't he something, though? He's just as cute as he can be. All right, you ready to go over here and play for a little bit? Huh? I gotta go to work. All right, I'm gonna set him right over here. While I'm setting him over here, let's run the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. Just a basic shape of a little tree. Let's be a good place for my little squirrel to live. You know, speaking of my little squirrel, I've got a new little baby squirrel. I wanna, sh I wanna show him to you. He's the cutest little devil you've ever seen. Watch him, look at him, isn't he something? He is so pretty. I call him Peapod Jr. If you've painted with me for a while, you know that Peapod was a little squirrel that I had for a long time who lived in my pocket. There. Isn't that the cutest little devil you ever seen? If you're not careful, you can get attached to these little rascals, and I do. They're very, very special to me. And every year I raise several, and then we turn them loose, and normally they go out and beating my brush there. They go out and just live in my yard and have a good time. And they're happy out there. And we sort of maintain them. We, we turn them loose, but at the same time, I keep food out there for them. All right, wow, all these places and big trees. You know, my little squirrel would have a ball here. I showed a, showed a little bit of my little squirrel last time, and I want to show you again. I think we got a little bit of footage here. He's one of the cutest little devils you've ever seen. A little baby gray squirrel. And I've been raising him since he was... Oh gosh, he was a tiny little rascal. Looked like a little rat when I first got him. But he's doing wonderful now. In fact, by the time you see this, he'll probably be living out in the yard with, with his namesake. We call this little squirrel Peapod Jr. And he'll probably be living out in the yard with him. Isn't that something? It's hard to get them to eat, as you can see. Little rascals or something else. There. I'm just putting in a few more little bushes while you're watching my little baby there. At this stage, he's mm, probably about 45, 50 days old, maybe. And I'm guessing, because when I got him, his eyes were already open. He'd fell out of a tree, and a very nice lady brought him to me and asked me if I would take care of him until he got big enough to release him. Yeah, you know me, I've got a soft, soft place in my heart for these little rascals. I just can't, I can't say no. I would, <laughs> I'd be like one of these bird ladies, like, that I work with so often. I'd have a whole house full of animals if I could. All right. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. 
And as you can see, today I have one of my little friends here with me. This is a little nighthawk that I brought in for you to see. Isn't he the most gorgeous little character? He is something else. I love these little animals so much. Ever so often, I just like to share one with you. As I say, this is a nighthawk. And he, he flies around at night and eats insects by the ton. Just flies around with his mouth open. This one's been injured. He only has one wing. But he's doing very, very well. So, Anyway, this is a painting show, so I think we should paint. Let's start out today and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, I'm going to set this little fellow down. So if you'll come right up here, I'll show you what I've got done already. Okay. Set him right over there. I'm just going to put another cloud here. You know, in one of the earlier shows, a couple of the earlier shows, I showed one of my little baby squirrels that I'm raising right now. And we've had so many people write and say, I want to see him again. So I'm going to put up a little bit of footage here and let you just check out my little squirrel. This is the one we call Peapod Jr. Because he sort of likes to live in my, in my shirt, too. Yeah. Isn't he a mess? I love these little rascals. They're so much fun to feed and to, to play with and to work with. It creates a whole new awareness of nature when you work with little animals like this. Probably in every town nearly in the country, there are people who work with injured and orphaned animals. And this is, this is where I get all these little animals that you see. I try to work with these people and help them out. Any way I can make their life a little easier. And they allow me to share just what you see right there. Some of God's little creatures. Isn't he adorable? By the time you see this, he'll be living out in my backyard. Because we do not, we do not keep these little animals. These are wild animals. And they're meant to live outside. And that's where we put them. But hopefully, he'll hang around the backyard and allow me to continue to, to share his world for a little while. Look at there. He's not the neatest eater in the world, is he? But that's okay. Every year I raise several of these little rascals and turn them loose. There. Just gives you a good feeling. All I'm doing is just putting in some clouds while you're watching little Peapod Jr. there. All right. He wouldn't share either. You notice that? That's totally his. None of that's for me. Okay. I think we have... We about had a little sky finish. Hope you enjoy watching those little critters because they really are fun and they're very important in my life. Hi, welcome back. I'm sitting here playing with a couple of the cutest little characters that God has ever made. These are a couple of little baby flying squirrels. Tiny little rascals. They're about six weeks old. Look at that. Aren't they some of the most precious little things you've ever seen? There, turn around here so we can see you. We call them slim and trim. There. Say hello, guys. As I say, these are little baby flying squirrels. They might be the most numerous squirrel there is, but you don't see them very often because they're nocturnal and they hide all the time. Okay, guys, you want to sit in my pocket while we do this? Huh? Here, you jump right in there. That's what's so great about it. You can just put them in your pocket. There, we'll let you sit right in there. These are little baby pocket squirrels, too. These trees remind me of my little squirrel. It would be a good place for him to live. I want to show you my little squirrel one more time. Shoot, I've showed him to you a couple times in this series. He's one of the cutest little devils that you've ever seen. He's Peapod Jr. He likes to live in my pocket. Of course, by the time you get to see this, he'll already be turned loose and he'll be free. Probably living in my backyard and he'll have a little condo back here in a tree. I love these little rascals. I raise a bunch of them every year, turn them loose. And they go back and they go back to nature where they where they're supposed to be. So hope you enjoy seeing them little rascals. They're really special to me and, and I like to share them with my friends. Speaking of trees, <laughs> this is where my little squirrel pea pod would love to live. I got a, I got a little bit of footage I want to show you and share with you today. I'll just put in this background while you're looking. Isn't he the cutest little devil that you've ever seen? This is Peapod, my little pocket squirrel. He's been with me for a long time. But isn't he precious? Oh, rascals love fresh corn. Tell you what, you could, you could have a whole farm and feed these. I must have 15 or 20 of them that I've probably raised and turned loose. 
that live around the house and they expect me to continue to feed them. And old Bobby's a soft touch. How can you turn something like that down? I'm telling you, how can you turn him down? I would sit and play with him almost continually if I could. I have four or five around the house that I'm raising right now. By the time you see this, they'll probably be grown and released because we don't keep we don't keep wild animals. All we do is raise them. I work with a lot of the people who take care of injured and orphaned animals. We just sort of help them out. Then we turn little rascals loose. But they don't make very good pets. They're better just to look at and enjoy. All right. That peapod can eat up some corn, can he? There. Okay. I'm just putting in a few little background trees here while you're watching the peapod there. But look at that little rascal. I'd say he's only a couple of months old when that was made. He really is gorgeous. You know, we've, we've had so many letters from, especially my young friends all over the country, saying they want, they would like to see Peapod into a cartoon form so they could have coloring books and all that. So recently, I got a friend of mine who's a cartoonist to make us a little cartoon of Peapod. So we'll, I'll show you him. Isn't that the cutest little thing? But we'll have, we'll have all kind of little Peapod things here pretty soon. All right. The tree reminds me it's a, my little squirrel Peapod that you've seen so many times. That'd be a perfect place for him to live. <laughs> in fact, today I've got him in my pocket here. It was a little chilly when we were filming this show, so I left him at home and I brought, I brought his little cartoon equal here. Isn't he a mess? That's Peapod the pocket squirrel. There. We finally turned him into a cartoon. He became so popular, especially with my young friends, that we've, we've actually made a cartoon out of that rascal. There we are. A few little, just think, think about all the little shapes in here. <laughs> this would be a perfect little place for my little squirrel Peapod to live. I tell you what, I've got a little, little bit of footage right here of Peapod. Let me show him to you. That little rascal, he is such a cute little devil. He's lived with me ever since he was just a tiny little baby. In fact, his eyes wouldn't even open when he came to me. And I raised him up and he now lives in the backyard. I turned him loose quite a while ago. But he's the one little squirrel that doesn't seem to want to go away. He just hangs around. Every morning he comes to my back door and I feed him and take care of him. He runs through the house like he owns it, which as far as he's concerned, he does own it. And that's all right. Very few people ever have the opportunity to know a little a little feller like him as well as I do. And he's very special to me. Very, very special. <laughs> he's a mess, isn't he? Isn't that something? I hope you enjoy seeing all these little rascals. They're very special in my life. I spend a great deal of my time and resources just devoted to these little characters and taking care of them. I've added a little bit of phthalo blue now to my brush. There, this, I need all these trees because my little squirrel needs a place to hide. I think, tell you what, I got another little piece of film here I want to show you about my little squirrel Peapod. He is just the cutest little devil you've ever seen. Now how can you not fall in love with something like that? Isn't he precious? This is my little squirrel Peapod. He lives with me. Well actually he lives outside and he just, because I've turned him loose quite a while back. He's, he's full grown now. He was just sort of a baby there. But he still comes back every day, every day. And I feed him, I'm soft touch. But he me something. I always have a lot of scratches on my hands and stuff and playing with them because they have very sharp claws. The one thing that I like to say over and over, we do not advocate making these wild creatures pets. I only raise them and I turn them loose because wild creatures, that's where they belong. They should be wild. If you want to keep a creature, get a domestic animal, doggy or a cat. They're a lot of fun. They're a lot of company. But wild creatures are to be wild. It's the way God intended them to be. There we are. But sometimes they need a little help. And if they do, I jump right in there. I like to play with them like to watch them grow. And, but these little squirrels, when I get them, a lot of times they're so small, 
that their eyes aren't even open. And then you have to get up at night just like, just like you, well, like I did with Steve when he was a tiny little baby. And you have to feed them two or three times every night. Of course, Steve's not so tiny anymore. He's over six, five, almost six, six. <laughs> Must have fed him good. Yeah, that rascal certainly grew. He outgrew me. There, this is a good place for my little squirrel to live right here. My little peapot. I got one more piece of film I want to show you. He's just such a cute little devil. <laughs> Isn't he something else? This is Peapod the Pocket Squirrel. There. I really like these little creatures. They bring a lot of joy to my life. A lot of joy. Where I live, a lot of the, a lot of the young people come over just to see the animals, see what kind of creatures Bob's got that day. And it's such a nice way. You can't, you can't handle a little squirrel like that and grow up and not like them. I don't believe you can. And I think we need to learn to respect nature and all of God's little creatures. And one of the ways that I like to do it is to bring you little characters like him. Yeah. Because isn't he cute? Boy, that's a close-up and a half there, isn't it? <laughs> little devil. Sometimes I have eight or ten of them at one time that I'm raising, and then I'll turn them loose. And, eh, we have a few little wild birds and all kind of things like that. Whatever needs to be raised and taken care of, we'll do it. It's my way of saying thank you. Because a little squirrel, or whatever you happen to have, he allows you to share a little bit of his world for a few days. And that's very special. Not many people get to do that. Okay. Let's wash the old brush. Wash the old brush. That's the, that's the most fun part of this whole procedure, is washing the brush. But as I've mentioned to you, <laughs> my camera people don't think much of this procedure. Sometimes they get a little upset with me. In fact, I tell you what. I, I'm going to ask them to turn the camera around and let you see. This is Richard. And Richard's been with me <laughs> since the first series. And as you can see, Richard has finally got smart. And he now wears a raincoat. He got tired of all of his clothes being painted. So we, ap we appreciate his, all of his work, though, that he's done with us and the fact that he stays with us even though he's got splashed. There. <laughs>